I've been teaching guitar here for over 14 years and 49 weeks ago, I decided to make a YouTube video every week for 52 weeks. Now I'm almost there. One of the most common questions I get here on this channel is, how come you seem to be teaching the caged system without ever mentioning it? The thing is, I think there are some downsides to teaching guitar this way. So here we go. I'm finally gonna give you my take on the caged system. <laughs> If you're not already familiar with the cage system, let's do a very quick review of how it works. There are chords everywhere on the guitar. There are scales everywhere in the guitar. And one way that we can visualize how to find those chords and scales is simply to visualize these common chords that we probably already know. C, A, G, E, and D. So for example, if we took that A shape, we can use that A shape and make a bar chord. And that's the A shape right there. We've just moved it up the fretboard and now we have a D chord. And in the cage system, they would call that the D shape of A. No, it would be the A shape of D. Yeah, well, we'll get to that later. And these chord shapes can also guide us to find scale shapes. For example, if we took this G chord here, we could see that that's the root there. And if we played G major pentatonic going this way, it would look like this. It kind of looks like the chord, right? It has all the notes of the chord plus some extras. And the shapes are movable up the fretboard. That's kind of the point, right? So if we think of this G chord shape moving up two frets, now we wouldn't really play that as a chord. It doesn't make sense because the open strings aren't coming with us, but we could imagine the same chord relating to the scale shape. That scale shape now is not open position. It's here, it would be a major pentatonic. <laughs> Are you feeling confused yet? Well, here's reason number one, I think the cage system is not the greatest for everyone. And that is that the terminology is very confusing for some. For example, if I said the D shape of A or the A shape of D, a lot of students will look at me like, what? Do you mean, is it an A chord or is it a D chord or what is it? I don't know. Now, for some students, they get it instantly. The first letter tells us the shape and the second letter would tell us what actual chord or scale we want. But it's not always that simple, especially when you say it quickly, right? The A shape of D. What's the A shape of D? Ah, that would be this one because it has this shape. That's the A there, right? And it's a D chord because it's at the fifth fret here. That's the D root. <laughs> So in all these years of teaching, I have found that some students like that terminology, but actually a lot of students find that very confusing, especially if this is the first time you're coming across learning how to move up the fretboard. Now, I think that using the cage system works quite well when students already have some experience playing up the fretboard because then they can start to visualize it. They have some understanding of these concepts already. But if you throw them the whole cage system all at once, it's way too confusing. And there's my reason number two. It's too much information all at once. The entire cage system is kind of complex. If you're used to cage, it seems very simple. But if you're not, learning all those concepts up the fretboard all at once is way too much information. The best thing to do is find the shortest distance between a student understanding one simple concept that they can take away today and memorize forevermore. And so what we should do if we're teaching caged or learning caged is you should just learn one letter at a time. How about just A? Why A? Because I think it's the most useful. It's the shape that we use so much in popular music, both the chord and the scale shape. So let's look at that one briefly. I 
already showed you how you can take that basic open A chord and move it up to make a bar chord. But we could also just use that chord, those three notes by itself, just the D, G, B strings, and we could move that anywhere. So if we did that in the key of A, we have A is one, D is four. So if we take these three notes and we move them all the way up to the seventh fret, we have a nice little triad of D. Why is that small chord so useful? It's so useful because we want to be able to connect chords and scales. That's part of the point. Too many guitar students are stuck playing either single notes or chords at different times, but we want to be able to play single notes and chords interchangeably back and forth whenever we want. We need to be able to see the scale and the chord all at once. And the cage system does help us do that. So here's that little A chord and here's a little D chord. So if I'm an A major pentatonic, A major pentatonic first finger pinky rule tells me that pinky on A and I play this shape, easy shape. And there's that chord, right? I can see that chord in that pentatonic shape. I could do the same for D then because major pentatonic is like a magic scale, right? It just moves up wherever we need it. So there was the A, here's the D, Here's the pinky on the root D, first finger pinky rule. Pinky goes on the D and I have easy shape D major pentatonic, magic. And here's that D chord again, but it's the A shape of D, right? It's an A shape, but it's D chord. So what does that allow us to do? It allows us to go back and forth between one chord and four chord. And now we're even changing chords, but we're also changing scales quite easily because we can just visualize it, right? A. And then we move up to D. And D major pentatonic, mm, because we can see the chord shape. We can see the scale shape because they're connected. There's the chord. Now, here's reason number three. Some of you watching are probably quite familiar with Caged already, and some of you might be fuming because you may have noticed that what I've actually done is combined the A shape chord with the G shape scales, right? G is part of Caged. And yes, I have, but that is reason number three for why I think cage can be very confusing. And that is because they are all connected. Isn't A shape kind of also G shape? Let me show you what I mean by that. Remember we, we talked about the G shape being this open G chord here and that it could move up and the root there would now be A. So it'd be the G shape of a major pentatonic, my, 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 that's confusing. And if I play that scale shape, that's major pentatonic easy shape. And you caged aficionados would say, well, but that's the G shape scale because we can see that G shape chord is a part of that scale. That is one way to find that scale by seeing, by visualizing that G shape of caged and then playing the rest of the scale shape. And so that's reason number three why I don't often use the caged terminology because as you can see, it can be quite confusing because the shapes are connected. The A shape is connected to the G shape. So should we learn them all? Maybe one day we should learn them all. But what I think what would be best is if we all just focus on one or two shapes to begin with. And that's what I'm talking about, that most of popular music is thinking about easy shape pentatonic. If we look at all these classic solos throughout the history of rock and roll music and blues and, and folk and country and all these things, so many are what I call easy shape pentatonic. And easy shape pentatonic, you could say is caged G shape, but isn't, couldn't you also say that it's caged A shape because that's the chord? And what I have found is that most students can very easily visualize A shape. A shape is very easy to visualize going up the fretboard, right? We can see them all over. And all we really have to do then is see easy pentatonic shape connected to A shape. Do we even really need the terminology? I don't know. In my book, Guitar Soloing Like a Pro, I just call it 
zone one and zone two. That seems to work as well. It, ultimately, it doesn't matter what you call it. The most important thing is what sticks for you. What helps you to remember how to connect these chords with the scale shapes? And we can just visualize it. We're visualizing it the same way. Maybe I just don't call it the C shape of A. Oh my goodness, the A shape of D. Oh, forget it. It's this, it's right here. You can see it. So because the terminology is confusing, the A shape for D and the D shape for A, and because a lot of the shapes overlap, the G shape overlaps with the A, the C shape overlaps with the D, and by the fact that so many guitar teachers, especially here on YouTube, try to teach the cage system all at once in one short YouTube video, I mean, come on, that is just not a good way to retain information and to learn the fretboard. The fretboard is kind of confusing, but if we take it one step at a time and just take one letter of caged, and you can use the terminology if you find the terminology well uh, useful for you or not, just call it whatever you want. The main thing is to help students get from not understanding a certain aspect of the fretboard to understanding it and retaining that information, not just right now, but tomorrow and next week and next week's. And you'll find that in my book, I essentially do use the cage system, but I just break it down to two basic zones, which I call zone one and zone two. And you can get this book on Amazon. On our Patreon this week, we are going to discuss this cage system in more detail, especially those two zones. Because like I said, if we get good at those two areas, there is so much of the fretboard that is unlocked. And in fact, that's what is mostly being used in popular music throughout, well, from the 50s to today. So that is well worth focusing on. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Blue Morse and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver. We're going for 52 weeks. I think I've got three more to go. We'll see you in the next one.